on the uh, conference call, you said um, that it's very clear to you now that office space is here to stay, that we're not going to see ghost towns of Class A high rises in Midtown Manhattan or other major cities. Uh, as somebody who's been going into Midtown Manhattan at least a few times every week since September, I'll tell you, man, it's still more a ghost town than not. When is that going to change, and what gives you the confidence to say something like that? Well, let me start with what gives me the confidence to, uh, to say that, David. We're seeing in a lot of cities around the world where restrictions are being relaxed a pretty rapid return to the office. I'll give you an example. If you look at Australia, where there's really been no COVID for some months now, we have major markets there where office uh, back to work occupancy is very close to pre pandemic levels. There are markets in the US, Dallas, where my office is located. Uh, most buildings are now at 30 to 40 percent uh, return to the office. Manhattan, San Francisco, some of the major cities though, are far behind that. We don't expect to see a real repopulation of those urban centers till probably post Labor Day. That's what you're hearing from companies at this point. I mean, it's similar to what we're hearing. Yeah. Some will, will start returning people in June in a more significant way and then uh, and then Labor Day. But, you know, you also said that uh, the majority view among major corporate occupiers is that work from home doesn't really work well. I mean, we've been doing it for a, well, a lot of people have been doing it for a long time. Brett, what are you hearing that tells you that? So most of the clients that we speak with have come to the conclusion that the workplace of the future and the way that they'll manage workers in the office in the future will be different. So there will be, I think, a more formalization of the rules around when you need to be in the office and when you don't. But remember, David, that pre-pandemic, if you walked into any major office user space in Midtown or anywhere else, you would find that floor occupied maybe 60, 70 percent. I think what we're going to see is a more formal recognition that it's OK not to be in the office perhaps every day. Um, but I think it's pretty clear now that most companies are concluding that after a, a year at work from home, they're losing a lot of cultural adhesion with their people. People are fatigued uh, of being at home wherever it is they're working. And I think really pining to be back into a communal, collaborative environment that is the office workplace. Yeah, Brett, it's more again, I mean... All that social interaction also can get the creative juices flowing. At least that's the conversation I've been having with a number of folks as well that are looking at this and, and considering this. Um, that being said, this idea of people returning to the offer, office, the fact that you could be seeing more hybrid models. We're hearing a lot about so-called hub and spoke uh, implementation by some companies as well. What specifically are you pitching or offering uh, to potential clients? How has that changed? You know, it's, it's, it's a great question, Morgan, and it's a very fluid situation. So the answer I'll give you is, is an expectation, but not a certainty. Most companies today, and, th and this is evolving, ra it's fascinating, it's evolving rapidly. Most companies today are beginning to talk about an office environment that feels an awful like pre-pandemic. And so, yes, for sure, there are office users that are thinking of hub and spoke. There are office users that absolutely want to use what they learned in the pandemic to try and reduce some footprint. I think many will. But my hunch is that if we're sitting here a year from now or a year and a half from now, most office users will be using the space not that much different than they did pre-pandemic. Shepard Smith here. Thanks for watching CNBC on YouTube.